Hello and welcome to the Hollard Sport Industry Awards platform. And today we are talking netball, an interesting time for the sport in South Africa. The World Cup being hosted in Cape Town in July next year. 24 professional contracts awarded by Netball South Africa in April for the very first time and a strong national team to boot. So a good time to chat to the president of Netball South Africa. That's Cecilia Molokwani. Cecilia, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, good to have you here. Let's start with those, uh, those professional contracts and why it's so significant that Netball South Africa has finally awarded those pro contracts for the first time. Look, um, netball has been a, one of the sporting coaches that was at the back. You, you know, when you talk netball, I mean, you would say, oh, one of those sporting codes. And then, boom, we are given the rights to host 2023 Netball World Cup. And that made a, a huge difference. And then comes Supersport and says, how can we help you? They became F&B for us. Yeah. And then I, I said to Mark, I remember the meeting we had in 2018. I said, Mark, the only thing you can do for netball it's to make sure that the girls in 2023 finish on the medal podium. It will be a pity and a shame that we know we're hosting a World Cup and our team doesn't finish on the medal podium. Then, and, and he said, uh, what can we do? Then we said and, and give him a proposal and give him a business plan of how do we think we can go about doing this. And in that, we, we had this thing of saying, you know, let's turn this players professional because if you want me to perform for you and you don't have me full time. There's no way that I can do everything, you know, openly so and, you know, um, wholeheartedly so, yeah. you know, knowing that I'll be reimbursed for what I'm doing. So we, we decided, no, let's contract the 24 players. Actually, it was the number 24 was never decided by us. Yeah. It was decided by players themselves who performed at the trials. And then the, 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 the coaches and the selectors, the, the, the players that they saw, because there were about 48 players that went to the trials. And I said, any number that you identify that you think these players can take us to the World Cup, Give us the number, let's contract them. So the magic number 24 came into place and they gave us 24 players and then we contracted the 24. Now the mark you speak of is obviously Mark Jerry, the chief executive of Supersport and uh, the partnership you reference, Project Victory, it's being called. And like you said, with the goal to get South Africa on the podium at the World Cup next year. What are some of the other details of, of that partnership with Supersport that allow you, and, and obviously it was key, that partnership in, 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 in securing those, those 24 pro contracts? Look, Supersport wants us to, to be the best that we can be. And Maguri said it straight to me, President, um, we don't identify ourselves with mediocrity. So we want to go out there and be the best of the best. And Project Free Tree, it means, you know, we are supporting you, we are behind, but we'll give you all the best support you can have. So things that we never had in netball. I mean, we've got... The girls now are at SAS, you know, the Stellenbosch Academy of Sport. They are staying, actually, they, they, that's their home now. They stay there basically with the coaches and everybody. And they wake up, they drink, they wake up, they do netball, they, they eat netball, they sleep netball, they do everything netball. They do everything sport as they do that. And the main thing with Project Victory, it's, 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 it's not only about the players, you know, it's about how do we also get them ready, not only physically and everything, but mentally. Because to me, it's even the life skills, you know? Teach them how to go and talk to the media. Teach them, how, let them be brains for netball. I mean, yeah. Project VT is one of those that is now saying, you don't know the players. We are going to make you know the players. You have never met the players. We're going to make you meet the players. Um, the players have never been in a platform whereby, you know, they, they could become stars. We are going yeah. to make them stars. And Project Victory is also about, you know, not only empowering netball players. You'll be shocked. The crew that will be giving this Netball World Cup life to the world all it's an all-female all female crew. crew. Yes, I saw so that. So Project That's Victory is not only about our only netball yeah. players. It's about us as netball and everybody surrounding us and everybody around us. And on that Project Victory, we are also, you know, talking more about no to gender-based violence. I mean, we cannot turn a blind eye on that as Netball South Africa. Look, we are the biggest and female using federation. The using the platform. We the have to. Come. Yes. We have to use this platform of the World Cup to say to people, look, we're here and we are against this. We cannot promote this as women, protect us as women. You know, um, 
give us that respect that we need as women. And you can only do that when we do it together. But we don't only want to say protect us. We want men to be part of this. Hence, you have seen now in netball, we have so much embraced our male you know, players and male administrators and everything. Because Project Victory is not about netball alone. It's about the media out there. You know, the media people, we are encouraging media that the media that should tell stories should be girls. We are encouraging people that ambassadors within your spaces should be women. So as we give the women the space that they needed and we give the women the time to shine because I believe wholeheartedly this is the time for women to shine. Cecilia, why do you think it took so long for netball to get to this point where it had a product that, that was commercially viable and you could be in a position to go to a broadcaster like Supersport and say, right, come and partner with us and let's, let's take netball forward, let's professionalise it and take those first, those first leaps and, 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 and steps towards making it a more professional sport. Why has it taken so long? I want to say um, a fish rot from the head. And if you have an, an organization where the head is not a visionary and the head doesn't have goals and objectives, you'll never get where you want to go. I mean, when I took over Netball in 2017, um, you know, the first thing I did was like, so you board members get allowances. They say, yes. I said, what is the national players getting? They say, no, they just play for the badge that hurt me. And I'm like, so you get paid for them to play for you and they get nothing out of that. And they said, yes, I said, okay, from now on, I'm cutting all your allowances. I'm not Things are gonna asking change. You. Things are going to change now. It's going to be a different block game altogether. We're going to cut all your allowances and we're going to pay these players monthly. Even though we don't giving them that much of money, but something they must go home with. And I said with them, I mean, remember they summoned me to the first meeting in January, I was not even three months in office, and the spa has summoned me, the, the leadership group, and they gave me, I think, a list of 20-something things that, they, they, that will make them happy and will make them, you know, perform and be the players they want to be. And I said to them, I don't know why you're doing this to me, but anyway, I'm here. Let me, you know, take the bull by the horn and see what I can do. And believe you me, in six months, I've ticked all the boxes in, in that 21 things. And I think that's how I earn their respect. And I, I also, you know, um, respect them because they were not quiet about what was not making them happy. They came out and talked to me and I had a listening ear to say to them, let me listen to you and hear what is that that we can do together. And guess what? In 2019, we ended up at the semifinals at the 2019 Vitality, you know, Netball World Cup. Yeah. And it was first in 26 years. And to me, it was like, we are doing something right here. Yeah. So the to me is speak for themselves. Yes, the core business of netball, of any sporting federation in the country, should be players, nothing else. Let's talk the World Cup next year. Cape Town's the venue. Hosting a World Cup is obviously a fantastic opportunity, and not just to showcase netball South Africa or, or, or netball in South Africa, but obviously from a tourism point of view. But what's it going to do for the sport in South Africa? Do you feel? You know, I want to say it's going to change the sport not only for netball, but for women. Because yeah. right now, no one believed in us as women's sport. I mean, uh, we had to perform, to do whatever we do, look at Banyana Banyana. Nobody believed in them until they said, we are the Africa champions. Now everybody wants to associate with them. And this is time for women. You know, whether we like it or not, in the sports world, this is time for women. And to me, it's, it's going to change. As much as we have started with the 24 players, to me, it's like netball will turn totally professional. Netball will be sustainable. We would never be, you know, be that sporting code that says we're waiting for government grants. You know, we, 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 we will have to be sustainable as we are as, as, as an organization. And the most important thing is, you know, netball to me will be known and will be at the space that it should be. And it should be respected and be given that, you know, that, that space of saying, as the second biggest federation in the country, did you know that, that we are the second biggest federation in the country from football, bigger than rugby, bigger than cricket. But look at how we are supported by the corporate world and look at how the two that are behind me have, you know, are supported. So to me, it's that mindset and everything else in netball is going to change because I can wake up in the morning, 
right now as I am, I work. You know, I wake up in the morning and I go to my workplace. I think that would change. I would do what I love and go and administer netball and be paid for doing that. Like, you know, other sporting code federations, big federations, presidents are doing and to grow the sport. And to me, it's, it's time that we think commercialization. Yeah. It's time that we think franchising netball and saying, if cricket can do franchises, if, you know, uh, rugby can do that in football, why can't we do it and make our sport that professional? Because nobody's going to do it for us. We have to stand up and do it ourselves. And that's obviously going to be key to the sustainability of netball. Because like you say, you've got the participation numbers. You're now on the stage hosting a World Cup next year. You've got a good commercial partner. You've got a broadcast, broadcast partner, which is obviously is key as well. The opportunity really is, is huge now for, 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 for you to grow netball in South Africa. Very huge. I mean, once you have a, a partner like Supersport, let me tell you, um, they're going to take you out there. People are going to watch netball. Remember, one time you don't know netball, and this is the time you're bored at home, and you start switching on your TV, and then, wow, what's this? The girls playing. Let me watch. And one thing that I can tell you is you watch netball for the first time, and I would, I'd even advise you, go and watch it live before you go and watch it on TV. Yeah, a different experience. The different experience altogether, and you'll start, you know, enjoying netball. I mean, the other time I was with Lux, I mean, I, I, Lux September, yes. a, a lot of people know Lux. Yes, from, and from football, yes. From football, he yes. was now in Cairo, and yes. Lux came to watch the Africa qualifiers and was like, President, wow, I never knew netball is so exciting. And I'm like, you see, he has given it another thought that he never had. You've and got to put the product in people's hands. Exactly. That's the thing. And we cannot do it alone. Yeah. Supersport must do it with us. And, you know, at the World Cup now, that because of Supersport has collaborated with SABC and Telcom One, I mean, it's going to say, even that child in the rural area mm. is going to see the Supersport he has played. That, to me, is key. And it's saying... They, they can dream. Now those little girls and boys who want to play netball can dream and say, if she can be there, it means I can also be there. And, you know, once everybody starts seeing that this is a sport that I can play and I can associate with, obviously, you, you start wanting to want your daughter to play netball yeah. and say there's a future there. There's something you can do about it because who wants to play for free now for volunteering? Nobody wants to do that. I mean, even gymnastics these days, you go to the Olympics, they get a medal, they can come, up, up, come back with money. So why can't we, we do the same for our girls and make sure that we, we make them, you know, get paid for what they love doing, their yeah. passion. Passion indeed, uh, Cecilia. I think it's a good place to leave it there. That was uh, Cecilia Molokwani, the president of Nepal South Africa, joining us here on the Hollard Sports Industry Awards platform. Until next time.